In this video, we'll look at some other factoring techniques. So the factoring techniques we've looked at so far uh, work well for quadratic functions, and we'll look at some what happens for linear functions and cubic functions. So when we have linear functions, such as these, um, we can common factor. So we're looking for the factor that's greatest, the greatest common factor that we can factor out of the two terms. So our two terms here are 4x and negative 12. So we can factor this function as f at x equals 4, because 4 is a common factor to 4 and negative 12. And when we do that, we divide each of the terms here by 4 to see what's left. We'll get an x here. And then negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. And the nice thing about this is that we can check our work. We can expand. 4 times x gives us 4x. 4 times negative 3 will give us negative 12. So that's uh, everything that looks good there. Uh, let's try uh, another one here. Let's try this one here with some negatives this time. Same idea. So d of x is equal to the common factor, greatest common factor here. Uh, we can divide negative 5 by negative 5, and we can also divide negative 25 by negative 5. So this is an example of having a factor that is negative, and we will divide each of those terms by negative 5. So negative 5x divided by negative 5 will be x. And be careful here, negative 25 divided by negative 5 will be a positive 5. And again, you can check by expanding to make sure that everything's okay. So you've seen common factoring before, maybe not connected to a linear function. When we, we are dealing with linear functions, that's going to be the, uh, the sort of limit of our factoring is factoring out that common factor. All right, let's move on. Something a little more challenging uh, is factoring uh, a cubic function. So here's a function that's cubic in nature. And this is something that you probably haven't seen before, but what we're going to do is just kind of walk through this and uh, and, and have a look at how do we factor this. So we can factor by grouping. And what I mean by grouping is that we can actually group the first two terms together here, and we can common factor these terms, and then common factor these terms. So this technique may remind you of factoring by decomposition uh, when we did the quadratics. So let's go ahead and do that. So a common factor to both of these first two terms looks like it's going to be an x squared. If we take x cubed and divide it by x squared, we get x. Take 3x squared, divide it by x squared, we get a positive 3. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to common factor these last two terms. So there's a common factor of 2 that we can pull out, and it's going to be positive, so we'll put a plus in here. And that will leave us with an x plus 3. And now you'll see that we have a set of factors here and a set of factors here, and both of these terms, this term on the left and this term on the right, they both have a common factor of x plus 3. So we can common factor that out as a common factor. So to do that, we'll just write x plus 3 here as our common factor, and then we'll divide each of the terms by x plus 3. So if I take this first term here and divide it by x plus 3, we'll be left with an x squared. And if we take the second term and divide it by an x plus 3, we'll be left with a 2. Fix that up a bit. And then we can check to see, can we factor any further? So this is a, uh, a binomial. It looks like it's fully factored. Uh, same over here. It doesn't look like we can factor. So if this had been a minus sign and the number had been a 4, we could probably keep going as a difference of squares. It's not, so that's as far as we can go. This expression is fully factored. And again, we can check our work by expanding. Multiply everything in that first set of brackets by everything in that second set of brackets, and we should get this back. All right, let's move on to a slightly different uh, question here. You'll notice that this is a quartic function, so it has a a uh, degree 4, that highest power of x is a 4. So with a quartic function, the nice thing here is that we can still do this by grouping. So before we do that, though, one of the first things that we should look at when we're factoring is look for a common factor. Is there a factor that's common to all four of these terms? That should always be our first move. And if there is, let's factor it out. So I think a 5 is common to all of those terms. But also, an x. Every one of those terms has at least one x in it, so we can factor out a 5x. And when we factor out 5x, we'll, we'll, 
divide each of these terms by 5x, so 5x to the 4 divided by 5x will leave us with an x cubed. Let me fix that up a little bit. And then we'll take 15x cubed and divide it by 5x. 15 divided by 5 will give us 3. It's a positive 3. x cubed divided by x will be x squared. And we'll just keep going. So 10x squared divided by 5x will be positive 2x. And then 30x divided by 5x would be a positive 6. So now that we've done the common factoring, we can go ahead and factor this cubic, sorry, this uh, yeah, cubic function by um, grouping just like we did the last time. And you'll notice actually that that question is the same as this question over here. So we've already done the work of factoring that part. I just wanted to show you that don't be afraid if there is a, a power greater than 3, we can still do things the same way, especially if we can find a common factor. So that x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6 will factor into what we saw, whoops, down here. 5x times x plus 3 times x squared plus 2. So that's how we can factor by grouping. Let's look at a, a, a second example here, second set of examples, I should say. And we're going to do this one as a uh, what are called sums and differences of cubes. We're going to start by doing the opposite. We're going to expand instead of um, factoring because this one is going to help us find a uh, pattern. So we're going to expand this, and when we expand this, we're going to multiply everything in the one set of brackets by everything in the other set. So x times x squared will give us x cubed. So that was, uh, that was this times this. Let's do x times 2x, which will give us a positive 2x squared. x times 4 will give us a positive 4x. Negative 2x squared here. Minus 4x. And then finally, negative 2 times a positive 4 will be a, whoops, negative 8, not a positive. Fix that up. And then from here, we can collect the like terms. And one of the things that you might notice, there is a single x cubed term. There's an x squared term that's positive and one that's negative. There's also an x term that's positive, 4x, whoops, and negative 4x. So those terms will uh, end up with, uh, will disappear, and we're left with an x cubed minus 8. Let me fix up the color here. So that's an interesting observation here is that we had this long complicated expansion, what looked like a long complicated expansion, and we got this. The other thing that I want to point out here is that we could rewrite x cubed minus 8 as x cubed minus 2 cubed. And so this is what we would call a difference of cubes. Remember that going this way was called expanding. And going the other way is called factoring. So if we go this direction, we would call that factoring. So knowing what we know now, what things uh, do we notice if we were going to try to factor this difference of cubes? Well, one of the things that you might notice is that the first factor are these values right here, x minus 2. The second factor has the first one squared. So our first term here in our expression was an x x is squared. The last factor is this last term squared. And the middle factor is really uh, just the product of these two factors with a different sign. So uh, we call this a difference of squares. And the way that we factor a difference of, uh, sorry, difference of cubes, I'll just write this down here. Maybe we'll type it. It'll be a little bit faster. And the way that we factor a difference of cubes is uh, kind of like this. 
So we say that a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b. So we take our two values, we keep the sign here, times a squared. The sign in our second, our middle term was the opposite of our other sign, and that's so that this happens here where we have the elimination of the squared term and the x term. Uh, so we get a squared plus ab. And then the next part here is going to be a plus b squared. So if we can rewrite an expression in this format, then we can factor it, factor it using this right here. So following that same idea, here's our first term, here's our second. So this expression factored is going to be I'm going to run out of room here, but let's try to squeeze it in here. x cubed minus 2 cubed. There's a difference of cubes. is going to be x minus 2, so following this pattern, times x squared, the first thing squared, plus the product of those two things, which is 2x, uh, and then plus the b value squared. And, our, and in this case, our b value is 2, 2 squared is 4. So again, if you recognize that difference of cubes, then uh, this moves along quite nicely. Over here, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to look at it as a sum of cubes instead of a difference. So same, same idea. Notice here, the only thing that I've changed are a couple of signs here. I changed this sign and this sign. And if we expand this all out, we'll end up with an x cubed uh, minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 2x squared. Um, plus, sorry, minus 4x, minus, sorry, plus 8. And if we collect all of our like terms, we'll get x cubed. Again, notice these squared terms have opposite signs, so they're gone. The x terms have opposite signs, and they're gone. And just a reminder, we could write this as x cubed plus 2 cubed. And again, look at the pattern here. We have our x and our y, or sorry, our, our x term and our 2 in this case. They show up here. They show up here. They're squared here and here. And then the opposite of their product is in here. So if we were to factor this, the sum of cubes looks very similar. The only difference is the signs are different. So we would have a cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b times a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And again, the reason why the sign in the second set of brackets is different from the one in the first set is so that this um, these terms here will have opposite signs and they'll be able to uh, disappear on us. So if we were going to factor again x cubed plus 2 cubed, we would get x cubed plus 2 cubed. Again, we need to be able to write these as perfect cubes. So x cubed plus 2 cubed is going to be x plus 2 times x squared. So I wrote a 2ab in here, that should just be an ab. I got excited and knew that we were going to use 2 in our example. So this should be a minus 2x, and this should be a plus 4, since the b value, thinking about this as a and this is b. And that's factored as a sum of cubes. So here's a couple of examples again. Just straight examples, x cubed minus 125. We could write this as x cubed minus 5 cubed. If you're not sure if 125 is a perfect cube, you can use your calculator, do the cube root of 125. If you get an integer value, then, uh, then you're all set to go. You could rewrite it like this. And now we see that we have a difference of cubes. So this factors to x minus 5. Take those two values, write them in here. The first one, squared. The last one is the other term squared. So 
5 squared, and the middle one is the opposite of the product of those two things. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. We want to do the opposite of that, so we'll add 5x. Some students just remember that, hey, if there's a minus sign in here, it's a plus sign in here, whatever works for you. Uh, except, yeah, and then we're, we should close off the bracket there. So that's a difference of cubes. If we can, we could factor this. It turns out we can't. There's nothing that multiplies to 25 and also adds to 5. So, um, But if you were given a really complicated example, you might want to just double check that. We probably won't see too many of those, but it's a possibility. All right, let's go ahead and do this one. We're going to rewrite 8x cubed as 2x all cubed. Plus 27 is the, uh, it can be written as 3 cubed. So now we have a sum of cubes. Now be careful, this is a now, this whole 2x, and this is our b value. So this is going to equal 2x plus 3 in our first term. Because it's a sum of cubes, we'll put a sum here. And then inside the brackets here, we'll have a 2x squared. It's all of that that gets squared, so be careful there. It's 2x all squared um, minus 3 times 2x. 3 times 2x would give us a 6x. And then plus the last term squared, 3 squared, is just equal to 9. And the reason why I said be careful and we would put that 2x in brackets is that it's not just 2x squared. It's going to be 2 squared times x squared. So we can go ahead and do that. So 2x all squared is the same as 4x squared and the rest will stay the same. And there we have factoring using a sum of cubes. All right, we have a little bit left to do. A couple more things. Let's try this first one here. This is a uh, fourth degree polynomial. You can see here, it looks kind of like a difference of squared. It's one thing minus another thing, and you might be struggling to see how it could be a difference of squares. But here's how we can do that, is we can write x to the 4 as x squared, all squared. So x squared squared, and then now we have a difference of squares. Remember, we factor a difference of squares. We get a minus b if this is our a value and this is our b value. We get a minus b times a plus b. So this will become x squared minus 5 and x squared plus 5. And then if we can, we would factor these other terms. So x squared plus 5 we can't factor. This one we cannot factor, but had this been a 25 in the brackets here instead, then we would be able to factor that. So we'll just leave that as it is. And then from here, we'll continue on and we will uh, do this next one. So again, just rewriting each of these as a perfect square and then we'll have a difference of squares. So 16x to the 4, we could take the square root of that and get 4x squared so this becomes 4x squared all squared minus 9 squared. And now you can see it's a difference of squares again. So we'll take that 4x squared in one of our brackets minus 9, sorry I forgot my squared, in the first bracket and then we'll have a 4x squared plus 9 in the second bracket. The order here doesn't matter if you put the plus sign in the first bracket and the minus sign in the second bracket, that's okay too. So we can just go from there. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, this part right here, last thing for this example, is now a difference of squares. So we can go ahead and factor that further. So 4x squared is the same as 2x all squared minus 3 squared. And now we can factor this difference of squares. Again, here's our a, here's our b. Difference of squares will factor into a plus b times a minus b. And then we still have all of this out here. Whoops, that should be a 9. 
And so, again, those were differences of squares, but they didn't sort of look like differences of squares to begin with. So factoring those fourth degree polynomials. Here's one more. This one looks a whole lot like some of the others that we've done. So we have three terms. We've got one that's squared, one that's to the four, and a constant term. Now you might be saying, what the heck is going on here? This looks very different. Um, the exponents are different, but the technique is still the same. And in fact, we can actually force this to look very similar to what we've done before. I'm going to say let a equal x squared. Some of you will be able to do this in your head, and if you can do that, that's great. But if not, make this substitution, then this question becomes x squared squared. So this is a squared plus 5x squared. So remember that a is, 5X, uh, a is x squared, so this becomes 5a, and then minus 6. So if we let a equal x squared, now we have this quadratic that we can factor just as we always have. So we're looking for two things that multiply. You can use a whole bunch of different methods, but essentially we're looking for two things that multiply to negative 6, and they have to add to 5. So uh, what's that going to be? 6 and negative 1. So we'll get a minus 6 times a plus 1. And again, we can check our work here. If we expand this all out, we should get this back. But don't forget that a was actually equal to x squared, so let's make that substitution down here. I don't know if I can we'll just draw that in here to, sh to remind us of what happened. So a is equal to x squared, so this becomes an x squared minus 6 and an x squared plus 1. I think I got my signs backwards because negative 6 plus 1 is actually negative 5. This should be a plus and the other one should be a minus. Let's just change that to a minus. Sorry about that. Which means we'll change this one to a minus as well. And lo and behold, this is a difference of squares. Oops. So the first one looks like a difference of squares, but six is not a perfect square. But the second one is, so we would get x squared minus 6 here times x plus 1 and x minus 1. And so we have our factors fully factored. If that 6 were a 36, then we would be able to common factor and go from there. All right, that is uh, factoring linear and cubics and quartic functions. Lots to uh, sort of digest. Make sure you do lots of practice because this will be... Uh, skill that's going to take a little bit of practice.